Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to all my brothers and sisters from all around the world. I just want to say that I appreciate you being here one more evening, one more afternoon, wherever you are in the world, whatever geographical location. I appreciate you. I thank you for taking time out to study the Word of God this evening. Again, my name is Dr. PJ from the Prophetic Word. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the Lord will continue to elevate you to another spiritual level. Like He will give you open spiritual eyes, ears, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this Word. In Jesus Christ's name, Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. And today, we're going to be studying the third part of Matthew, the 23rd chapter. And in this chapter, we are going to be teaching exactly what Jesus said. He called them hypocrites. Ye hypocrites, part 3. And I will start, continue from verse 17. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold, and whosoever shall swear by the altar is nothing, but whoever whosoever sweareth by the gift that is in it upon the altar, it swear by it it is he is guilty. So what the, um, the, the Pharisees were saying on the scribes, that back in those days, even on today, whosoever swore by the gold or by the saint in the church or by the cross, whosoever swore against the pastor or something, they said, even today, they 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 shall inherit a curse. Don't speak against the man or the woman of God. Don't expose them although they're doing wrong, although they're molesting children, although they're impregnating women, not only in the church and the community, but you shouldn't speak against my pastor. He is a man of God. And you see people going down. The same thing was back in those days. They had certain laws and certain norms that was not biblical. Amen. So if you swear by the temple, it doesn't mean anything. The temple of God sanctified everything that's in it. But they say no. If you swear by the gold, you must pay a fine. And whosoever swore by the altar is nothing. You can curse God. You can curse the altar of God. But whosoever swore by the gift that is upon the altar, then that person has to pay a fine. And what Jesus was calling them out. And he said, ye fools and blind. He called them fools and blind. For what is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctify the gift. Because see, in the spiritual world, the, the witches and the warlocks, they know that the altar is the power source. They must have an altar, a psychic, a warlock. Every wizard, every, they have an altar. That altar, wherever they're burning candles, wherever they have an effigy, wherever they have an idol, but they have an altar because for the kingdom of darkness, they know that their altar is their power source. Now, what Jesus was telling them, that ye fools and blind, for whether it's greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift, because the power was in the altar. 20th. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, swear it by it, and by all things thereon. So Jesus was correcting them. If you swear by the altar, you swear by in, you swear in against God, you swear by God who ordained it, you swear in against the power source. Amen? So then you're guilty. Mm -hmm. But in the 21st verse we read, And whosoever shall swear by the temple, swear by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. So the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, 
dwelled in that altar, dwelled inside of that temple. But then the scribes and the Pharisees, they had their own little thing going on where they would collect money. They would have fake wishes, where they would take people land, where they would devour the properties and the wealth of the widows, where they would go around and make up all these laws. And they just do this today. They, they was just spiritual gangsters. Spiritual pimps, and we have them today claiming that, well, like they are the ones that God ordained, but you are a royal priesthood. Remember that. Verse 23, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, which is very cheap, and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, which is judgment mercy faith these things are ye to have done and not to leave the other undone so they was having people to come in and give them their wealth but they themselves was not even paying their tithes to god they was they was they was paying with mint, you know, the little mint leaves, the little anise, little star anise, or the little tiny, or the little cumin. They was throwing little stuff like that. So you see, what God is symbolically saying, they do little things, but then they omit the greater things. And that's what happening today when they teach the word of God. They omit certain things, what is important for us to be stronger in the spiritual realm, to be able to recognize the devil and, his, and the development and the, and the season that we're in now. So they omit it by teaching you logical thinking, sociology, and just entertain you and ride you out with motivational speaking while the meat of the word is to strengthen you is to empower you is to add, elevate you to a higher spiritual level but they tie you down and you squeeze you down because they don't they don't have they don't they don't they omit the matters of the law of god the judgment of god the mercy and the faith they don't teach you none of those things and in verse 24 jesus say ye blind guides were strained they were strained at a gant and swallow a camel they will look and, and strain their ass at this little little thing called gnat you know you see them sometimes you see them in in the flies they will stare at that the gnat the little flies that go around in, 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 in the springtime and the summer, they will look at that little tiny, tiny, tiny thing. But the camel, they will overlook it and say, look, this person committed a, a small little sin. And they will just blah, blah, blah. But the person who doing way greater stuff, they will just turn their back and say, forget about it. Verse 25, woe unto you, scribe and Pharisees, hypocrites jesus was hot he was he, he he got angry hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess and you see them today they got big houses, million dollars, 60 million dollar home. They got 90 million dollar yachts, 120 million dollar air private airplane. They live lavishly. They extort the money from the people on social security. They, they have these poor old widows uh, writing a check for them and sending it. They send you all these envelopes, say put the palm of your hand on it and send it back with $25. All kind of wickedness you see they do. These so-called wolves in sheep clothing. And Jesus was correcting them. Jesus called them hypocrites. And he says in, two, in, in verse 26, because anything highlighted in red, in red was Jesus. Though blind Pharisees, he tell them cleanse which is within. You must cleanse your heart. You must have a clean heart. You must have a clean soul. 
They look good on the outside. They dress nice and you see them every day. And, but they sold their soul to the devil. Why are you listening to diviners and false prophets? They're not teaching you the word. Amen. They are full. They say in Saint 27. Hypocrites. Woe unto you hypocrites. Scribes and Pharisees hypocrites. For ye like unto the whited sepulchres. Which indeed appear to be beautiful outward. But are within full of men's dead bones. And of uncleanliness. And we see that today. We see a lot of them going down to the pits of hell. See many of these false teachers. Have the same characteristic. The same spirit. The same wickedness like the Pharisees. Pharisees was then but it's today. We find these wicked Pharisees in the pulpit. They got a lot of followers. But they're leading you astray down to the pit of hell. They're not preparing an army to war and to stand up against the wickedness because when everything starts crumbling down, we saw what happened two years ago and it's still going on. Everybody's at the same level, everybody's on social media now. The doors are shut. You see, the foot soldiers are here. What you gonna do when the chariots come? I'm here to strengthen you. I'm here to elevate you to another level in the word. We're going to keep our eyes on in the word. We're going to keep our feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 28. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That's what Jesus said. You find the hypocrites. They're in the closet. They will go on the street and march and say they're against this and they're against the lifestyle. But they themselves are living the lifestyle in the closet. And then when they record them and they get exposed. See, they're being exposed because whatever you do in the darkness shall come to light. Whatever you say in secrecy shall be shout from the rooftop. 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, even down to the nitty gritty, wickedness. And remember, the scribes and the Pharisees, they manipulated the law. They did rituals and they killed the true prophets of God. They murder the people of God, the true prophets of God that they were supposed to, 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 to come to the people. These scribes and Pharisees, these are the Sanhedrin councils. They're the one who grabbed them and murdered them and buried them. Jesus does not lie. This is the truth. And then they garnish the sepulcher of the righteous. They garnish everything. They say you owe this amount of taxes and we, you must pay all these interests when you buy a house. Amen. They charge you all this interest for 30 years. You can watch and see the usury today. Amen. Verse 30. And say if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have not been partakers with them with the blood of the prophets. This means that these are Nephilians. Nephilians, they, they murder the people of God. They change the law. They defend their own kind. A Nephilian will defend another Nephilian. A Nephilian is a half human and half fallen angels. Just look at them. They're good looking. They're famous. Look at them. They're everywhere. They're in every ethnic group. Then every geographical location, they are everywhere. They're in the church, they're in the school system, they're in the judge in the pulpit, they're in the jury. Nephilians defend Nephilians. They know the person is a murderer, they let them go free. But they will crucify and kill the innocent. They will lock up the innocent. If you teach, I remember a man stole a candy bar. When I was six, seven years, he stole a baby root out of the store. They gave him 50 years. 
for stealing a candy bar. Well, you probably didn't see it. They just accused him and said he stole it 50 years. And the people protested and protested to they let him out 20 years later. Amen. It says here in verse 30. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partaker in the blood of the prophets. 31. Wherefore ye be witness unto yourself that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Children of the murderers. Nephilim. Half human. Half fallen angel. Children of the giants. That's what they are. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Let me stop, let me stop right here. He said, fill you up the measures of your fathers. You see, the word of God say, like the sins of the fathers shall fall upon the children down to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate him, those who hate the Lord. See, if your daddy and your mommy hate God, and then you decide to follow your mommy and your daddy and hate on God, then you're going to get the same punishment that your father and your mother get. If your parents teach you to hate certain people and you teach your children to hate certain people, then all of y'all will end up in the same place. See what I'm saying? This is what the word of God say. And I just want to close out and tell you this is the third part of the title, Ye Hypocrites. And this will be the end of Ye Hypocrites hypocrites i do appreciate you from the bottom of my heart for you listening to me studying with me i'm here as a servant of god to encourage you to be to stay focused to stay steadfast on the word of god be encouraged and the lord be with you and have a blessed week my name is dr pj from the prophetic word